Morning everyone. Retailers, we have a wonderful session in chart in store for you right now, 1130 at the Market District. It is maximizing your buying power. Identify tools and strategies to help you achieve higher margins. Who doesn't want higher margins? Our panel today consists of Ula Halt. She's the founder and CEO of the Faves app. Paul and Yvette Bergenon owners of Shop Monkey, an online and brick and mortar store. And also we have our moderator, Audrey Taylor, the global retail business manager at Off Price. Audrey? All right, can you guys hear us okay? Ooh, perfect. So kind of following up on yesterday's session about how to shop the show with the trees. And in that session, we talked a little bit about the misconceptions and just what is off price and what to expect. So today we're going to dive in a little deeper with some real life examples from some great retailers and um, some great services and tools that you can use to, as we said, maximize your buying power, but really see the financial benefit of off price strategies. Um, so I'll let our panel introduce themselves a little bit more. So Ula, why don't you go ahead? Sure, thank you so much. Can you hear me? Is it working? Okay. Cool. Um, so my name is Ula and I am the founder of Faves. And what is Faves? Faves is a tool that helps buyers stay on top of their buying. So one of the one of the issues I'm sure that you already have experienced as a buyer is that when you're at market, it's really easy to just kind of lose track because you're looking at a lot of things and staying on top of the curation, like the visual representation, what you're buying, but also financial. So that's what the app does. And Paul, Yvette, will you tell us a little bit about your business? Absolutely. I'm Yvette with Shop Monkey. This is my husband, Paul. We have been in business for 20 years. I started in my home and then I needed help. And then I asked him, and he quit his job and came home and helped. And then, yeah. <laughs> way to go, Paul. Nice. <laughs> yes, we morphed into what we are today. We have an online retail, a huge presence there, and we also have a brick and mortar, and that's doing very, very well as well. Thank you. So this session should be very eye-opening. Like I said, we want to look at some real-life examples from the buying that Paul and Yvette do at our show. Paul and Yvette attend a lot of shows. Um, so they're a perfect example of you have to keep your options open. You always have to be scouting the best opportunities in the market. And those may come from online. They may come from shows in your local area or shows in Vegas, as we know. So we want to show you some of what those opportunities look like and the margins you can find on them and why it's so important. So first of all, do we have any new retailers in the audience or maybe this is your first time attending our show? Oh, <laughs> Orlando. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, that's good. So we have people pretty familiar with our show. Um, so we'll jump right in. Um, our first slide. So as I said, we're going to be looking at some real life examples. So my first question for Paul and Yvette is you've been attending the show for a while now, but I'm sure this wasn't the first show that you started going to off price. So when did you realize that you needed to add an off price strategy or start looking for these types of opportunities? We have always purchased off price. Um, that's a big part of who we are. The margins are there. So with off price show, that brought the vendors to us and we were able to purchase for them directly. One of the biggest advantages is when we come to off price, um, we're buying stuff at a much better margin. So we take less risk. So buying off price, the vendors here are taking on all the risk buying in big bulk. So that opens up opportunities for us to do test buys, and then we can kind of figure out what, how each product is going to fit into our market for our customers. So we, we definitely, off price is a big part of what we do and what we know we need to keep doing. Doors a lot of doors are open because of it. There's great vendors here. And in terms of the types of products that you buy, is it specific categories or is it a little bit of everything um, in your mix? Is it accessories? We, we buy a lot of apparel, a lot of footwear. Um, those are our two main categories. So we always come here looking for those things. We also know that when we're buying stuff at an off price value and we're getting a much lower risk involved, 
we test every category we can because there's a lot of stuff we don't know if it's a good category for us or not until we actually make a buy and figure out what we're doing. Right. So it just gives us the ability to open more doors and figure out what works for us. There's stuff we bought that because it was a good buy that we never thought would be a good product. And all of a sudden now we're trying to source it anywhere we can because it's a best seller. Yeah, perfect. And so the beauty of some tools like Faves is it really allows you to see the margins on those categories and when you make those purchases. So I wanna look at our first example up here. And Ula, walk us through a little bit about what we're seeing here and the opportunities that this is showing us. Sure. So what this is, it just shows examples of buying like a basic product at a standard wholesale and then an off price. And when using faves to capture your buying, you're able actually to keep the visual, uh, you can keep your pictures of the buying pictures that you're taking, but also price information delivery and those kind of things. In this example, it actually shows the price information. So in the first one, we can see that we're buying a product at a standard price of 375 at a wholesale. And we go ahead and say, we're gonna sell this for $10 in our business. And we can see the resulting markup of that. That's a 2.67. Now, conversely, if we're buying a similar product at an off price show, we can see that we are able to actually the cost price of the product, a similar product is quite a bit lower. Um, in this example, it's 190. And if we go ahead and actually say that we want to sell it at the same retail price as $10, we can see the resulting markup is a little more advantageous and interesting for us. So tools like Faves, is, it just kind of gives you that information straight off the bat. So as you're, per, as you're sourcing your inventory, you see that you don't have to do the calculations in your head. You can actually see the resulting, what is the markup? So it's a good tool to have uh, when you go ahead and actually buy at off price, but also if you buy s uh, somewhere else so you can stop before you actually end up making a purchase that is not going to result in a, a profit for you. And another point to that, so maybe you're scouting all these options in the market, you find both of these options um, on basic tanks and you realize that there's two great prices and, or one price is greater than the other. So that's another benefit of phase because when you are in the market and it gets crazy at Vegas or wherever you're at um, and you take pictures all over, you can actually visually see, oh, wait a second, I do have two white tank tops that I'm considering. Let's think about it. So can you guys walk us through that top, uh, thought process when you have two comparable products like these tank tops and what, what that decision making looks okay. like? Okay, these are actually real products that we carry. Mm -hmm. So the, the brand on the left is a, a brand that we buy from year round over and over and over the one on the right last off price show is a new vendor so we found a comparable product from them at off price for a much better price point and the product quality is almost identical so we bought in with them we did a test buy to see how things would go product came in there's a few variances in what we thought we were going to get um, as far as the size runs different things but with that being said these these are realistic numbers. These aren't just example numbers. These are real numbers of products that we did testing on. Um, I forgot the rest of your question. Uh, well, yeah, for, for the off-price benefit for that is they brought this vendor to us. So if there's anybody here in the boutique world, everybody knows the picture on the left is from Zanana, which is huge in the boutique world. Everybody buys from them because of their price point and their quality. But I think this other company is going to actually, they're not here at this show today, unfortunately, because we were looking forward to seeing them here. <laughs> but since they're a brand new vendor, I know they probably haven't it. had that that comfort level of going into every market and show yet. But I'm sure we'll see them at the next off-price show because their booth was packed when we were in there at off-price. Mm -hmm. And Paul, I know that you buy some brands full price that you also buy here off-price. And so can you tell us a little bit how you mix those together? Well, one of the reasons that we do come here is because of that. The first time we ever came to Off Price, we didn't realize that we'd be finding brands that we already buy from. So when we came in, we met people like DNL. They always have big brands, and they're the same big brands that we bought from. We just get it at a much better price point. So they're buying the bulk. They're taking the risk, passing those savings on to us. We can buy it cheaper than we can from the vendor directly, and then it's a win-win for all of us. They're moving product 
we're buying product at a better price point, we're making better margins. Definitely. Um, and so here is another good example. We have a blazer, uh, a little more trendy products. Um, so here we see the margins again. And I think another important point is knowing your customer, knowing what you're willing, what they're willing to pay. And that can help you realize if the off price is a better option for you in that case. Um, so Ula, do you want to speak to that a little bit about um, knowing what they want and how do you put those prices to it? Absolutely. And so in this example, it's based on your real real sample <laughs> where I missed where I mixed it up a little bit. So what it is in when you are buying uh, uh, for your customers, you know what their what their price point is. You know the style they're looking for, but you also have an idea what is it that they are they're willing. Where is that? Where is their, the sweet spot for their purchasing power? Where is that? So when you are going ahead and actually looking at products, you can keep that in mind. And by entering that price point into the retail, you see that again markup. So in this case, when we're talking about trend products like this, we can go ahead and, and put in that wholesale price. And finding similar products here at off price, and we can see there is quite a difference again in the markup. Um, so similar. Yeah. So when you look at a at an item at the show, you're not saying, well, what what is the markup? math it's what will my customer actually pay for it, this exactly so that's the real thing so it's not just looking at the markup and putting that in and making that your decision but it's like you also need to keep in mind who you're buying for um, because if you put it in a markup of seven but it gets into a price point that is ridiculously high or that is ridiculously low that you might actually be able to take more out of it so uh, it's a good idea to keep that in mind when you're buying yeah Another yeah, another great thing about off price, I think a lot of buyers like to pass the savings that they find here onto their customers, um, and I think you guys do that a lot. <laughs> okay, so when we come here, our obviously our most important thing that we're looking for first is to get better margins on stuff so we can make profit. When we buy full price wholesale from every company, we're basically paying Keystone, which is like fifty percent of the retail. Inflation is out of control. Shipping costs are out of control. So if you're only making, you know, double what you're spending, by the time you take all those other fees and expenses out, there's very small margins left. So when we come here, we're obviously looking first for us to have better margins so that we can offset our profit margins. But secondly, we always are putting discounted products in that we're buying from here into our store. So people can come in and find stuff at a better price point and we could still make 2x on our discounted items, whereas other items we're making 4x and 5x because we're getting full price even though we're buying it at an off-price value. So it's a kind of a mix of things. The customer comes into the store, they find the discounted racks, which we're making 2x on, and it's a deal to them, they buy it. If they come in looking for the discounted items, we're making money, but then they shop the store and they're buying full value items too. So it's kind of a win-win. The customer's happy. We can pass stuff on, whether it's holiday deals, Black Friday deals, any kind of promotions. But we're not actually losing money to offer those deals like some other retailers have to. So off-price gives us the ability to buy it cheaper. Right. And so moving on a little bit, um, so now that off-price has become a large, or it has always been a large part of your strategy, um, we know that shopping at this show it can be a little bit different than shopping at other shows the availability might be different each time you see that vendor they might have different brands or new brands or the products always changing it's always evolving the deals you hear today gone tomorrow so with that are there any challenges that new buyers or buyers could be aware of and any tips that you might have for shopping off price in that manner Absolutely, you're shopping, you're just checking out the vendors, but a lot of times the product can be here now and then gone later. You've got to make decisions then. And you got to know what sells for you and be able to find those products quickly and buy them before they're gone. Or maybe even the whole amount of it. Like we talked to somebody the other day who had just 48 of an item. Yeah, I want it all. I don't want any competition. So buying, I think, quickly with good decisions and homework on your back end is smart. Yeah, and finding, you know, we always are looking for certain things and more, but if you don't find what you need, you can pivot too and 
and find something else that's close or very similar. And so since the, the product is a little bit here today, gone tomorrow, you know, sometimes your order might come in and it might not have that one style that you were looking for or um, something like that. So Ula, do you have any tips? For example, here's an order where we can see they may not have gotten everything they got. They got some really great deals from this vendor at our show, um, but not everything came in as they ordered it. And so they had to pivot. And to be honest, that can be the nature of off price sometimes, but that's the opportunities are so good here. It's worth it's worth it and the risk is low, but you have to be able to pivot. So do you want to speak to that? Absolutely. And I think it's not just an off price thing. It's a reality of buying things. Some things are just not going to show up. I think what the key is that you need to know, you need to stay on top of it. You need to know when you're expecting things to show up. And so you can act and pivot and, and know what to do about it when you discover it. So actually, if you want to go to the next screen, because there's two, two, two things that you need to keep in mind. As you're curating things, you're building, a, you know, you may be building a collection. And if these two sweaters were key to what? What? A team's message okay. popped up. I'm sorry. I should have turned that off. <laughs> I was like, what? Did I do something? Um, so in this example, I, I went ahead and actually searched like what was on order for se September that did not show up. And I can see that we are missing two sweaters. Now, instead of just uh, waiting for something to happen, I, f I look at it and it's like, these two sweaters may actually be integral to my co uh, collection. Maybe I'm doing a, a marketing promotion where these two sweaters go a part of uh, uh, you know, an uh, ad piece that I'm putting together with pants and, and um, shoes or boots or something. And if they don't show up, then, then we're kind of up the creek. So I need to be able to act from a curation standpoint. And I need to also go in and find out what does it mean from a financial point? Like if I'm missing these products, I won't be able to actually create the turnover that I'm expecting. So being able to actually stay on top of it from, from a financial perspective and find out what is the implication of these products not showing up from a visual uh, view, but also a financial view. So then I can act. So then I can say, okay, I know I have vendor relationships with you know certain vendors. I'm going to reach out for somebody who I know sending uh, selling sweaters similar to this. Um, so building the relationships when you're a market like this can help you in this situation. Paul, would you say that some of these vendors here allow you to pivot more quickly because of that reason? Yeah, we have you have relationships with vendors, right? So over time, you kind of know exactly who you can go to and who you can count on. When you're doing new vendors and you're signing up for new, sometimes you just don't really truly know. And I don't care if it's in the off-price world or if we're at a regular show buying full wholesale. It doesn't matter. When you don't know the vendors at the, at the beginning, you don't know. You always have to have an open mind to figuring out who your vendors you can always go to for support and getting product that you need. Definitely part of the beauty of off price is the lower risk though. So when it is a new vendor or a new category, it, you feel a little bit more comfortable diving in, say you're adding swimwear to your assortment or a, just a new category or brand altogether. Testing brands, I think that's something you guys do. You buy off price brands and then decide maybe if you want to go all in full price with them. Yeah, we, we do a lot of test buys. So sometimes, you know, it might only be a $500 order with a vendor. and we kind of see what the cost of freight is coming in. We kind of look at the overall balance of, is there a good margin for us dealing with this and, and figure out our risk factors. But for us, you know, test buys are easy. You know, a few hundred dollars or $500 is really nothing. That's a low risk on our part. Like I said, here, at least the vendors, they're showing up, they're taking full responsibility by buying full truckloads of everything to get the product for us. So we just capitalize on that savings. Awesome. Um, so now, I know, you, like we said earlier, this is a big part of your business. Um, what percentage of your purchasing do you say you dedicate towards these opportunistic buys in this channel? That's kind of a personal question, though. <laughs> my goodness. Just kidding. We truly are open book. We set aside 10 to 15% for this show. We spend at the top of our budget because... As you can see from, well, it's not on the screen now, but there are some things that don't show. There are buys that we didn't expect to find. The vendors that we deal with all the time are like, hey, we just got this in. We take advantage of that because that's a huge profit for us. But again, 10 to 15% is what we set aside. 
That's awesome. I think that's a very realistic amount that people could be dedicating to their budget each year or each season. Um, like I said, you always have to be scouting the best opportunities. And so if you go to one show and you blow it all on everybody's favorite brands, um, you're not saving room for those opportunistic buys that could really be the money makers at the end of the year or um, the end of the season. Um, and so, Ula, for people who don't love spreadsheets and who are not so much with the mass, I imagine your app is just a dream and makes their life really easy for reporting and you know seeing that final budget. Yeah, I, I think what it is that when you get into this business, you're, you're creative really. Most of buyers and boutique owners are, they come for the love of the product, the creative mind, and they're like, the financial aspect is super important, but it's not the love of uh, spreadsheets, right? Um, and so being able to actually combine it and being able to have that visual overview and let that be the driving force and then having the financial attached to it. So you allow yourself to be the creative wish that you are, but also be able to stay on point. Know where you are in your buying budget. Know when things are supposed to arrive. Those kind of things, exactly, yes. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so I just like one or two more questions for you guys. Um, so for buyers who may be a little bit more intimidated by the off-price concept, or maybe they don't know if it's right for their brand identity as a store, as a boutique, what would you say about that? How can you maintain that in brand integrity and you know the quality? Because we know it's there, but some people may be afraid that buying discounted wholesale means that they're a discount store. Okay, we, we, we've always known our big brands and who they are and what our customers are looking for. When we're, as far as confidence level buying here, we know that what brands that we're buying and then we know when a product looks comparable, if it's in the right price point to be able to market something that's not the same big brand, but a comparable product based on our customers. So for us, it's just a, we have confidence in our customers and that we know a little bit about our customer before we make a purchase and it, it kind of makes it easy to buy because we know what fits in for our, you know, what, what our needs are when we're buying. It, it kind of comes more natural over time. It all comes back to knowing your customer, right? It's really important. Awesome. Ula, any um, final thoughts on your end about um, buyers who might be considering an off-price strategy or the perks? Yes, I, I, I guess my, 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 uh, my, my thought is that do it. If, uh, it's so easy just to continue going to the same show, trade shows, but if you have not been to an off-price show, absolutely do it because the markup, the, the opportunity to, to discover products that allow you to try out new categories or like we saw in the examples, you know, get, uh, get other price points of the similar categories that you already carry is there. Uh, it is your business. Uh, you want to make sure that you're making the profit and being able to consider off, you know, having off price as part of your mix makes absolute sense. And staying organized exactly. with tools like that. And I know you guys are whizzes. You guys got very well inventory management. And that also helps too, because then you can see the opportunities within your numbers and see where you're missing out or um, where you're overspending and not not losing out on those opportunities so i think we have a little time if we have any questions for our panel um and ula and paul will be around here too but ula's app is also available to download but any questions about um their their business they're buying or ula's tools Open box. paul and yvette where is your brick and mortar store we are here in oh in Oviedo. No. in where we're, we're in Oviedo. We're about 40 minutes from here, East Orlando. Basically. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, we get to go home tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and they still make it all the way to Vegas to see us. So. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Out. yes, of course. All right. Well, I think that's it for today. But thank you guys so much. This is our final fireside chat. Um, and we're very excited to have brought some insightful sessions to you all, some really intelligent and great people to learn from in the business yesterday, today. I just love the people at this show. Um, so, but yes, please stop by if you have any questions for us. Thank you.
Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Yvette. It's been great. And don't forget, we have off price coming in February too, February 13th through the 16th after the Super Bowl, right? So keep that in your books no as well. Oh. No Super Bowl party. No Super Bowl party. You literally can walk out the door and watch the Super Bowl. It will be in Vegas. Little FYI. Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys.